Righty then, so first game of the day we have RNG versus LNG. So RNG is probably one of my favorite Chinese teams. Um, I just think that they always get it right and they're one of the best teams that have never really won Worlds in my opinion. Um, but they've got very very close multiple times but unfortunately usually there's kind of one or two weak chain like links that end up going wrong. So when we get into the draft we're in 11.15 so this is where Zin was good. So we have Zintao first picked, um, response is a Viego LeBlanc, now Viego can be flexed, so, you know, it's it's still a flex, but it is probably better in the jungle, I think, on this patch though, was before people kind of realised, oh I got hit, how good Viego actually was in the jungle, and pretty much how funny is, because you know, the... <coughs> more fun a champion is, the more people want to play it, and the more practice they get in solo queue, which then translates to better competitive games. So, in response to the Viego uh, LeBlanc, they've gone with a Varus and a Lissandra. Now, this is great, and this is what I was saying previously, I think in yesterday's reviews, that people were completely sleeping on Lissandra, especially when it comes to the LeBlanc matchup, because Liss into LeBlanc is a very, very easy lane to kind of play. As soon as she jumps in with her distortion, a W, and you can instantly just use Lissandra W, and that will basically CC her, you can put an auto, a Q into her, and you'll just do a massive amount of damage, you know, so... I think overall, um, this is a really, really good pick, and they have blinded the Varus. Now, the good thing here, and the reason why I still like this draft, is because things like the Varus and even the Misfortune, which I think a lot of people are also sleeping on, you can pick them early into the draft, and it's not really going to matter too much, because they can change the runes and the playstyle that they go with based on the opponents they're against. So, right here, this could be like, okay, it could be potentially on hit. They have a Viego. Uh, they do have LeBlanc, which makes it a little bit scary, but you know, if they don't have any big range otherwise, then great. Now, they have responded with Ash, which means this virus is now going to have to go um, Lethality Virus and go for like the Poke Build, but that's completely fine. And he likes that in this kind of comp. So now what you can do is you can change the rest of your comp to kind of fit this um, play style or this team dynamic. So they've got rid of the Nard. They're looking to get rid of top laners that have a lot of upfront kind of power. The Renekton hasn't been taken, which is something that Ale has played a lot. And they've even taken it very early in terms of priority in multiple different games. So I'm surprised the Renekton isn't pick or ban here. Purely not because I think it's good, but just because I think that Ale is... It must be like his comfort pick. I don't know, because it he doesn't really... He hasn't played anything else in the playoffs so far. So we will see. So the Volley Bear come in. Obviously, there's still a flex between Viego and Volley Bear, so it doesn't really um, change too much. Now we've got the Leona, Cannon. We'll see the Trundle come in, um, which, you know, hopefully... I mean... He goes Halo Blades. I don't think he will. If he goes Halo Blades, he can just trade a lot better with Leona. I don't really like the uh, Guardian kind of proc as much um, on the Trundle. But Trundle is a very good counter to Leona because Leona is very, very tanky. So she jumps in with all those tank stats, especially Aftershock. Trundle instantly ults her. It gets rid of the tank stats off her, gives it to him. He becomes very, very strong then. So... Um, so this is, you know, I really much prefer RNG's comp here. I just feel like they've got a good counter defusal lane in mid lane. They do have a good jungler even though he's counter picked, but in jungle a counter pick doesn't matter as much um, because you can choose not to skirmish with somebody. In bot lane they do have this virus which is going to struggle until he gets his Dirk, but then as soon as he gets his Dirk, he can get them so low that they can literally just kill them, they can dive them, they can just run them down. Like There's a lot of different things they can do in that lane due to the fact that virus has poke. He has gone with the zombie ward as well, which I really, really like to see. Um, any other interesting runes? Everything else is pretty standard. Um, Cannon has gone with the absolute focus, which I don't like as much. Um, I think Transcendence is just better, but I can see why he's done it. So that when he comes in for these kind of TP flanks, he can come in, alt, flash in, uses Portal Belt, whatever he needs to, and that's really, really good for him. He'll get a lot more damage off because of that absolute focus, and then they'll all be CC'd before they can return damage back to him. Now, for the opposite side, um, everything looks pretty standard. We've got LeBlanc who's gone uh, Biscuits Time Warp, which is usually a more aggressive kind of laning phase uh, combo. She has gone with the Ghost uh, Poro though, which 
I'm going to be interested to see how she implements that into her gameplay because I feel like uh, since Eyeball Collection gives you what one or two kills basically for free, that's usually better when you're on these kind of burst champs. As you can see here though, Lissandra instantly going with this big chunk, so she instantly manages to get quite a substantial chunk on the um, LeBlanc. Now Ming going in for this trade is really, really int. They're not really in a position where they can fight at level 1, especially considering Ash is very, very good into Varus early into the game. Especially until he gets his lethality and he can rely on his Q as, you know, reliable poke. At this stage of the game, he is going to be using those auto attacks because he doesn't have as much mana. And also because, you know, it's not going to do as much when he throws that Q out. So, Zin, I do like how the Zin has started blue buff here. I think the Zin needs to be pathing into bot lane here because it's Kennen into Vigo top lane. Kennen's really not going to struggle whatsoever. Whereas Varus is going to slightly struggle earlier into the Ash. And then at 6, the Trundle can do quite a lot into the Leona as well. So I like that he's pathing into bot lane here. Um, he should go blue, gromp, red, and then look to try and relieve some of this early laning pressure um, off his bot lane that they are experiencing here. So we did get spotted on that ward up top, and this is an unfortunate thing. He's actually started taking his walls. Now this is bad because he's going for a full clear against Volley, who is a counter champion. And as we can see here, Volley has done the fast clear, which is red, chickens, and gromp. Which means that he is actually going to have the agency because he doesn't really need to, the blue buff to walk into the jungle, potentially kill a Zin Zhao, take the blue buff away, and then gift his blue buff to even the LeBlanc, or he can just take it for the XP advantage. So, as you can see here, Tarzan's moving. The Trundle is free to move whenever he wants right now because they have massive amounts of pressure in bot lanes. So, this is really, really grief. I think that the Zin Zhao, he started pathing correctly, but then he went for this full clear for some reason, which isn't good. Now, he has smited that chicken there, so, or well, the Raptor, so he doesn't have smite full red buff, and this is just going to get taken away. Maybe they give it to the Ash, actually. No, Ash just came up for a little bit of extra damage. So, yeah, okay. So, so far, Zin has griefed a little bit. Volley does get double Scott now. Or he could do anyway. He could go blue, walls, and then top scuttle. That ghost poro is showing up in the jungle already, actually. So that was little Blanc's ward that spotted him on the blue buff. So she's actually getting more adaptive force from that. So I guess it's actually not too bad. Now, unfortunately, they're going to get engaged on here because Ming has just walked away and kind of left Gala on his own. So this that was a really, really bad time to move. Or Gala should have also moved with him or backed off. So a little bit of miscommunication there. I don't know what's going on. Um... So, so the Zin actually managed to get this crab, which is surprising because Volley had the ability to just go for it. I guess he just preferred the, the tempo. Now Zin is just walking up to get vision. Now this isn't too bad because with Zin Zhao, you don't really need the XP as much because your ultimate is just quite impactful. And it doesn't really matter as much if you fall behind because of catch-up XP. So a, um, a single camp with catch-up XP gives additional uh, XP that's the same as like a solo kill at level 1 or roughly the same anyway so you get a considerable amount just for being multiple levels behind the average of the of the team so this is good to see now Zin is now pathing into bot lane for this dragon which is really really good like I like this is something that's good to see now I would like if the observers focus a little bit more on this bot lane wave just because I, it looks like it's about to crash into tower, um, but the Viego is not having a great time. He's 15 CS down. Obviously, it's a melee into a cannon. Cannon excels into these melee champions just because, you know, that's kind of um, what he's good into. That's why he's a good counter even in solo queue to, you know, the OP picks right now like Aradia, Riven, and... And Fiora is actually pretty good into all of those. And Fiora's a little bit harder because of the parry, but overall, he's very good into melees. And this is one of the things that makes him very, very good in the meta right now, too, is the fact that he's good in solo queues, good in competitive. He's this massive early game laning bully that has a huge impactful ult um, in the mid to late game. So I really, really like Kennen. And I'm glad to see it here. And I'm glad to see it punishing 
Um, so CS down, but he did TP back to top. Um, he's still ten, like uh, he's still nearly two full like full waves up on him, which is really good. But so right here uh, we have Xin Zhao in bot. So this is bad because LeBlanc has just pushed this wave in, and it's gonna crash to the tower. There's nothing else. Uh, sorry, I mean Lissandra. There's nothing else for her to do here right now. So what she should be looking for is this bot lane because this bot lane is actually getting a slow push. So if this Lissandra wouldn't have walked up here and taken all of this poke for no reason, she could have used, uh, even though there were three minions into the tower, that's still a little bit more time that she gets on a roaming timer that LeBlanc won't be able to respond with. She could run into bot lane, wouldn't have used all their mana. She can come into bot lane and with Zin, they can just tower dive this bot lane. So the virus actually has a serrated Dirk now. So he's going to be doing a massive amount of poke damage. Damage. So we're gonna see um, a lot of poke coming out of him. So see, we've got the slow push here, um, and you know, like if Lissandra and Zin were here for it, then great. Now Zin might lose his blue buff there, but I mean, you know, Zin doesn't really need a blue buff. Um, he could have instead got a double kill in bot lane and then rotated into this dragon, which it's an ocean dragon, so it means there is that risk that you could get a cloud soul. But um, either way. Although I do think some of the, these champions are also good with Clouds all. I do think all the souls are kind of good in their own way. Just think Cloud's the weakest out of all and you wouldn't really prioritize it as much. So that was so much damage out of this cannon. So this is just his alternator. So this is what I mean. Alternator spike on champions is so big, especially when you combine it with them sword shoes. You just get so much additional damage. He just completely 100 to 0 this Viego. Oh, well, I mean, he nearly killed him off. Um, and he made him, he forced him to use his ult, which Viego's ult is an execute. So now he loses a massive amount of his kind of skirmishing potential. So that's really, really bad. So right here, I do want to see Zin Zhao just go for this. LeBonk is still in mid lane right now. Just go for it. Even though the, the Volibear is here, they can win this 2v2 because the Viego is so low on HP. Now they can't though because the LeBonk is moving up into top lane. So now they will just have to finish this wave and just back out. Um, if they don't, this could be kind of risky, but Xin Zhao is actually uh, hovering the lane. Again, like we previously mentioned, Xin Zhao doesn't really care about the XP as much as other champions. Um, so he's just sitting here just to be um, safe um, in case, you know, the in case the volley comes or they try and go aggressive. He's also staying outside of XP range too. Pretty sure he's outside of XP range there. So they started this Herald. Okay, so Herald started right now. And Botlin is looking quite spicy. They know where three members of the enemy are. So the fact that they have such a big HP difference and Varus is still poking them down with Qs means that with this Biscuit in his inventory, that might actually be enough mana that they can just get kills here. So RNG are going to get this Herald too, and now because they've seen everybody topside here, the and also Ash used her ultimate to try and influence this fight, um, which was completely wasteful, now she's going to die in the tower. So she dies here, um, they can't kill the Trundle as well. So, as we can see, Varus used his Biscuit there to get that mana back so that he could actually go for that dive. So, really clean play out of bot lane to kind of um, understand that the top side of the map was kind of the most saturated and that's kind of where everybody was. So, very excited to see what they do with this lead. RNG has always been known for having extremely good ADCs. So, we'll, we'll see where they, uh, where they go to from here. So again, okay, so the cannon is just diving this Viego at this point. Viego is way too far behind to do anything. And because cannon has um, alternate, uh, his alternate was on cooldown, actually. So this was actually just really good play by Zhao Hu. Gets the ult off, keeps him stunned up, and then just lays him down with autos. Now, unfortunately, the Zin did come for XP there. and did get some of the kill XP, which denied some of it from the cannon, but that's completely fine. Uh, Zin Zhao did actually invest quite a lot into this lane to... You know, stop the volley bear doing anything. And now they're actually going to get two towers. Now, this first tower is great. Obviously, they've got all the plates. The next tower is going to be worth that big 600 gold payday. But I don't really think... Um Actually, it's okay. Now, the, the problem is that if this happened and the cannon wasn't this far ahead, this cannon's 
you know, uh, like 1500 gold, 1600 gold ahead right now. So what's actually going to happen is even though they are getting this tower very early and the Viego is going to freeze the wave back basically by his um, inhibitor tower, it's not really going to matter that much because the Kennedy is now free to roam the map as much as he wants, which means now they can get Soul uh, roughly uh, 31, 32 minutes and then they can just look to end that game out with that Soul no matter what it really is due to the fact that even if it is a Cloud Soul, Kennen's actually pretty good with Cloud Soul due to the fact that he can move his ult around a little bit more and the speed on him is very, very good. So, um, the Ash has to flash away from the Leona ult. So, bot lane actually have a massive amount of pressure um, due to the fact that they are Lethality, which is a much better early game spike than um, Vampire Acceptor. Since Lethality, you know, with Varus, you want to poke them out with that Lethality with your Qs. And Ash is never going to be in range to actually hit him, never mind need to regen HP. So, uh, this is a really big fight. So, we see the Volley Bear just jump in instantly and just take Varus out. He will die straight away for it, and the LeBlanc also dies. This was way too greedy from Tarzan. Like, especially considering that Vega was top with no TP and no way to actually come down, and there's an objective up. So, uh, he, he looked for the pick, and he really wanted to get Gala, but he got him at the expense of him and his mid lane, which is really not a good sign. It, it shows that he's kind of... Kind of uh, trying to force a little bit too hard and this might partly be because the Viego is so far behind so because Viego has basically just kind of entered this game away the Kennedy is now free to basically just roam them on the map as much as he wants and just do whatever so it's really uh, it's not not looking very good for LNG based on how they're playing this early game and how um, hyper aggressive they're trying so we see the replay here Ash gets the W Trundle kind of Gets sort of caught. We see the TP coming in for RNG, and then the Volley Bear just instantly jumps in with the LeBlanc on the back line. They do manage to kill him, but they get more than enough damage off to kill him and the LeBlanc alongside. So, this was just really forced and way too. Um, it, it just wasn't worth it. As soon as they see that teleport coming in from the Lissandra, they just want to back out and just accept that they've got t a, a TP advantage in. Um, a few minutes time due to the fact that the LeBlanc used their TP earlier So instead of trying to force a play at that point to get that gold what they should have looked to do is Basically just reset out of the play run away make sure they don't take too much Make sure that the enemy can't get this dragon either due to say some sneaky vision around the dragon pit and then kind of leave Now unfortunately Kenan missed that Q and he still managed to pop the, the LeBlanc clone So he's extremely fed right now and nobody can really match him in a side lane They sent LeBlanc just because she's a little bit more bursty and she's a little bit safer due to the fact she's an assassin so it's a little bit harder for her to survive against him in comparison to something like a like a viego that's only got a short dash and his ultimate but again that gets rid of most of the damage from his kit so volley bear did actually spot the leona walking in here especially on this redwood um using his e so they can't really do that much now the kinnon is in the bot side right now and lissandra is just mashing the viego because you know she's not ahead but she's already done her job making sure leblanc doesn't get ahead as well we've got another fight coming down leblanc ends up uh wing back we get a nice leona ult on the trundle but the trundle is ulting leona at that point so she can't really go in because if she goes in the amount of resistances that are being drained from her are going to be so much that she will probably instantly die to just the Trundle Volley and the LeBlanc. So I like that they kind of backed out after that play and they didn't overcommit for something that they weren't 100% sure they were going to get. Now this is something that I really like to see as well. Is Kennen is building perfectly, which I really, really like to see. He has his um, Sork Shoes and his Proto Belt, which is giving him um, a massive amount of penetration. Um, so he's getting 24 pen just from those items. So... That's very good. Now, the other thing, we saw some previous cannons in, I can't remember what team it was. Um, I think it was Fun Plus. Yeah, so Fun Plus uh, top laner was going cannon. But the, the kind of problem was he was building uh, Morello all the time. And he was building Oblivion Orb very, very soon. Now, that's really bad because on cannon, as you can see, Yahoo, um has picked up this... Um, this stopwatch, which stopwatch is incredibly influential, because if you get one really good uh, stopwatch off um, in a fight, then, you know, that can basically change the fight entirely. 
So, you know, it's very good, especially with Kennen. If you can run in, get into the middle of the team, drop his ultimate and then stop watch, then that's very, very good for him. Um, you know, I, I really like to see it. Right, so... Right, so so okay, so he was six zero on Zinzali. He's never lost on Zinzali. Seven point five KD. That's pretty impressive, actually. So even though these stats sometimes are completely pointless, I do like seeing them sometimes. Uh, still not not too bad. Right, so now RNG are very much in the lead here. They've got a four K gold lead at sixteen minutes, which is huge. We can see that a lot of that is actually in the cannon right now. The cannon is coming onto his third item. So, to be honest, he's about 2,000 gold up um, on top of this Viego. So, Viego is going to be completely out of the game. He's only just managing to siege this top tower now, um, considering both of his are gone. So this has been a very, very hard lane for him. Cannon's also getting um, the other side lane towers too. So, he's continuously pushing his lead. Now, unfortunately, I think it was Xin Zhao that dropped that Herald, so he will end up sharing the Tower Gold with him. But, the Lissandra's here as well. Uh, so, I would have actually liked to see um, them just let Kennen get this solo gold on his own. Would have been another 600 gold, and then he would literally be in a position where he will just 1v9. Like, he will just completely take the game over. I've never even heard of Rare Atom. WE are actually very, very good though. Very, very good. Okay, so Volleyball has finished his Sundra right now. LeBlanc's got her Ludens first pen item. Unfortunately, she's so far behind right now that she's not really going to be have as much time to have an influence on the map as kind of other um, kind of champions would have due to the fact that, you know, this is one of her biggest fights, and she's also gone with these Mercreds to try and reduce the um, kind of CC that she gets out of the Lissandra and also the Kennen later on into the game. This because obviously, like I said, Lissandra is a massive diffusal lane for um, LeBlanc, because if LeBlanc jumps in, Lissandra uses a W, she trades back with more damage, and then she leaves. So, we do see the Serpent's Fan come out on Varus already too, which is another really, really good sign. It means Varus is on his two-item spike already, which is going to make going for this third dragon very, very easy. It's going to mean that they have a massive more amount of teamfight potential, especially with Varus ult, Kennen ult. They can also use the Lissandra as kind of setup, so she can walk in, ult somebody, and then they can kind of chain everything off that person. Um, and then they'll just take over. Now the only kind of tanky members they're going to have is the Volley Bear. Um, when he gets a little bit more gold. And the Trundle will be tanky based on being able to steal the stats away from the Leona. But um, overall we can see this damage coming out now from the Varus. Due to the fact that he has that Mana Moon and his Serpent's Fang. He's now probably going to go... I'd like to see him go for Prowler Claw. But with it being China he's probably going to go for... A uh, dust blade instead, which you know is nowhere near as good in my opinion. But we'll see what happens. So, to be honest, the fact that Xin Zhao is this healthy and doing this well in a volleyball matchup is actually pretty good due to the fact that volleyball like i said can trade with uh, zin quite easily throughout the game but to be honest zin's team is just very far ahead right now i wish they pull up the gold again because i'd really like to see how much of this gold difference is inside of the cannon um he does actually have zonyas now as well which again even more penetration which is great and now he's doing the correct thing and he's going for a void staff so this build path is very very good because he's going to be basically 
doing true damage to everybody due to the amount of penetration that he has unless they've got magic resist now we see no magic resist yet in the ash but she is going to be building into this wits end now so she will be a little bit more sturdy we have some merc reds in top lane from the viego okay that's nice too and then we also have um merc reds on the mid and the support so it does get away get rid of a little bit of that potency now his items will still be removing all of that magic resist that they've got either way um, which is, you know, very, very good, it's, uh, except for, say, when Ash gets a Negatron Cloak, because he can't really get through that much, but sh he's still going to be doing a lot. Now, I like to see here that the Leona has actually got Anathema's Chains. This is extremely good, because she's going to be looking to just CC people into Oblivion in this game. So, especially with the LeBlanc, if she ever decides to jump in, Leona can just kind of flash Q into E ult, and she just gets locked up, and she can't even jump back. So... Um, one thing Leona can also do too is she can flash cure and then she can use her ultima on the pad that LeBlanc will return to with a W and that means that if she does jump back then she'll get stunned instantly unless she uses her ult to jump again when she's back but the amount of reaction timing that's needed for that is very very um, um, difficult. So, the, another really big thing about um, this Anathema's Chains on Leona 2 is it doesn't really matter that she built this before a mythic item because your first item doesn't really have to be a mythic because you don't really get that mythic passive until you get a second item anyway. So, what you can do is you can build something like an Anathema's. It gives you a massive amount of potential. It'll increase Leona's overall CC lock, which is already, I think, around 4 to 5 seconds. So, that's going to get increased by 20% if they don't have uh, uh, any tenacity, which, uh, you know, I mean, the... Um, Ash might not actually have tenacity even though she does have uh, magic resist now so if that's the case then she's going to be able to do quite a lot uh, I didn't actually see at the start of the runes to see well I did look over them briefly but I didn't actually see if anybody's got legend tenacity on but that's going to be the biggest thing that's going to um, stop this anathema as being as impactful but I think the Leona probably already knows who has uh, legend tenacity now so she's going to use that information to decide who she puts anathemas on and that's going to change the team fight so a really big fight here so we did talk about anathemas let's actually just have a look over this fight and see what actually happened because it was kind of crazy so the ash is just in the back doing damage like there's nothing that can really be done the volibear actually manages to just steal away that dragon um, and even though they do get that dragon, RNG are just too far ahead um, at this point in the game they'll, that they can just kill everybody. So, obviously, unfortunately, they got that dragon, which is a shame because now that means that that kind of 32 minute soul mark is going to be pushed um, way further back. So, they're looking around 37 minutes until they can actually get soul now for RNG, which. You know, I mean, would be okay if LNG had some kind of scaling elements, but they don't really. As we can see here, the cannon is just ripping through everybody. Um, he, he's just way too strong. Like, uh, at this point, this game is more than likely over purely through this kind of matchup. Now, this is something that is kind of unfortunate to see, though, because Ale, um, we previously mentioned in other VODs, the FPX one, for example, that he only really played Renekton, I think, in three games. Yeah, so as we can see here, in three games, he played Renekton three times, and all three times he completely griefed the game. Like, there was no way that Renekton was a viable pick in those situations, and he just completely ran it down. So here we can see, let's go over the replay again, just so we can, again, go over what kind of happened. So RNG do actually start the dragon up, and, you know, they do have quite a lot of bursts in Zin W, uh, Zin Q, sorry, that they can use for it. So he used his W, and, you know, he was waiting for the W animation for some reason, and it dropped to 600. So an easy steal there. Tarzan does die for it, um, and they do actually manage to get crying, but... And um, the cannon is very, very strong, and he's just doing a ridiculous amount of damage to everybody. And he just snowballs the game. Now, the Zinzao was gone for a Black Cleaver. Now, the reason I don't really like this Black Cleaver build, but buy here, is none of them really have towards of 80 to 100 um, armor kind of points and I don't really think any of them are going to get to that either. Purely for the fact that the cannon is so strong right now that 
they need to be building magic resist purely for the cannon otherwise he will wipe their entire team out so they're not going to be building armor for quite a while in this game and once they do actually get to building that armor i feel like the game is already going to be completely over if they haven't thrown this lead so i think black cleaver here is complete grief um i just really don't like it it's not like you need um any kind of movement speed or anything either it, it just it just doesn't really make sense and um, zinza would prefer something like a sterax here so that he can be a bigger disruptor in these team fights so that the cannon can do what he wants we get a pick on tarzan but he does use his ultimate to get out um, which, you know, is okay. That does restrict some of their diving, but they're not going to be looking to diving. What that does do, though, is that means that Tarzan, who now doesn't have Flash or Ultimate, has no way of getting inside this pit and stopping them. So, if they force this Baron right now, they can basically zone away the... Um the volley bear and Kennen has his ultimate so Kennen's gonna look to come in here teleport with alt and just kind of kill everybody if they stay here so as we see here a, a flank ward coming in Kennen gets instantly blown up though by the leblanc this was very bad by him though leblanc was just waiting here she gets chains and double q it just instantly pops him and then he just dies so they he really disrespected this leblanc here like really really bad i think this tp to here was just such a bad tp like it's so far away and they don't have vision of where leblanc is so the cannon is completely grief there like that was so bad and that is now going to allow lng to go for this baron if they feel confident that they can survive it and you know potentially change this game based on that so I think this could have actually been a really, really big throw from RNG just because they went for a extremely greedy teleport when they could have had a much safer one. Like, I would have even preferred if Kennen TP to the wave there and then just ran up um, because he could still zone them out to let his team continue doing the dragon. So, yeah, overall, that was really, really bad. So see, we see the replay here. She gets the chains instantly, jumps in, distortion, QQ, and he just takes so much damage from that. So the LeBlanc actually did work there. She actually did a lot. So that's really, really nice to see. And yep, like I said, this is kind of, these kind of throws are enough, but still, what is AL doing? His team just got a great um, pick and actually won a really good team fight. And what does he do? He jumps in like under tower. It doesn't make sense. Like I feel like Ale is completely out of his league here. Um, and he has been in a lot of these games. But Icon does show up and Tarzan does also show up. So that's how I think they're getting through. Now LeBlanc right now, she has her Ludens and she's actually gone straight Rabadon. So she's got the Blighting Jewel. And she's got her Rabadons now, Rabadons now. So she's going to be doing so much damage because she has so much pen and so much AP. So if she ever gets on top of somebody now, she actually has the agency to just one-shot someone. So unfortunately, she missed her chain there, so she couldn't really do anything. Now RNG were looking to try and get an opening to come back into the fight, but they get zoned off with the Volley Bear E. So they're trying to contest this dragon because they do want to get to that soul, and LNG are actually tanking it. So they are losing a lot of HP. So Kennen is coming from a, for a flank now. He doesn't. He does have TP uh, flash available, though, so he might just look to ult and then just flash in, and then use his onions. Because he can just zone them off. So dragon resets, unfortunately. This is a really big dragon kind of dance. Um, RNG have taken quite a lot of damage from that now. But they're very, very happy with this situation. Because Varus can just keep poking them out. So they actually have enough poke with just Varus. And then go crazy. LeBlanc jumps in. Gets a lot of damage on Ming. But it's not... Well, it is just about enough. But the Viego gets instantly killed. And now they're going to go on the dragon. Oh, LeBlanc actually manages to get that dragon. And now they're going to run down LNG. They have enough damage to run them down. But will LeBlanc be able to just completely carry this fight i think maybe she will actually because she's just so far ahead and she's got so much pen if she manages to get on this virus she's going to do so much but the cannon is peeling for him 
very, very close on the Trundle HP there, though. He just about got out there. He's got less than 100 HP. So that was very, very lucky for him. Um, overall, I think that was a definite win for LNG, purely because they got that second Infernal, which is going to be so important in this game, especially considering LeBlanc is going to be going into a Void Staff now. I would like to see her get a Medjize as well. Now she has nine stacks and it's gold efficient to upgrade. Um, I'm not sure if she will, but I even think that movement seems is pretty good for her for getting those flanks off. Um, but we will see. So... So right now she's just working towards our Void Staff. She is full in terms of items and she doesn't really want to sell anything right now. So she can't just buy um, a Blasting Wand. So she is just going to hold off on that. She's going to try and get a pick on Varus, but he walks away, which is... Spacing was good. Um, he is doing about 25% of her HP with a single Q though. So maybe he can potentially do anything. Ash has also got a third item now in a Ginzu's. She does have a broken stopwatch though. So that's going to be a bit useless to her. Um, Varus on his three items as well. Unfortunately, he's gone for the Dust Blade, which I really just don't like. The logic that he's gone with it is that invisibility allows him to reposition in fights and get away. I really don't think that's too big of a concern, especially considering if LeBlanc gets on him anyway, she'll reveal him with, his, with her chains. So either way, I, I don't think and Dust Blade was a better pick here. The Haste obviously is nice, more Qs, which means you know he can do more poke, but... If he is accurate with his cues, then the lethality that he could have got um, out of a Prowler's Claw instead would have actually given him um, enough kind of damage that he wouldn't need the haste to use multiple arrows because they do a considerable amount more. Now the difference is that Dust Blade gives haste as a mythic bonus, um, which he already had two legendary items before he even built his mythic, so he was going to get that haste, uh, well he did get that haste, but the uh, Prowler's Claw gives just straight lethality, so it ends up way better in the end, um, and I just don't like that it's gone with Dust Blade, it's a very common mistake. Um, I can see why people go with it, but I don't like it personally. So there's a big fight going on here, but Icon gets completely chunked out by this Varus. Now, Varus is actually unbelievably powerful at this point of the game because he's got his Mana Moon completed as well. This is one of his really, really big power spikes. So if he manages to poke them down, Kennen's actually well on his way to get Rabdons now. What I think they need to do is not look for fights really, but... They're going to look for it anyway, so Leona ult misses, the Trundle uses ult on the Leona as well. They get quite a lot of poke with the Zin's out and the Varus Q, but they're not really going to do that much in this situation now. Now, one of the big things that I would have liked to see here is them not try and force this. I want to see Gala just go and farm every single camp and side lane so that he can get to that Rabadons as soon as possible, and then they look to pressure around the Rabadons, especially because that Rabadons gives a nice amount of magic penetration as well. So I'd like to see them play it a bit slower now they have this lead they're not going to lose this lead to be honest the next fight i think they should be looking to go for is this dragon so there's one minute 30 left he does have his rabadons now fortunately i think he could have got it way earlier but you know it's okay he has it now for this dragon so i don't think there's any way that rng should actually lose this dragon now I think they're in a very, very powerful position. They have um, the ability to just Baron Dance, or oh, sorry, even Dragon Dance very, very heavily with the Varus Qs. So I think that they just want to let their team comp play out now and just wait for Kennen to get a nice flank or a, a viable engage. Because, I mean, as soon as the Kennen has his flash, um, which is going to be in about a minute or so, he is actually going to be able to just run them down. Especially since he has Zonyas and Rabadons and he's getting penetration on every single item. So he's going to be able to just run in, use his Hexprotect Brought Belt to get closer. And then if he needs to get even closer, he can also Flash. So Flash, Ult, and then he will just lock all of them up and do a massive amount of damage. Now, unfortunately, I don't really see a world where LNG come back into this game. Now, if Icon completely pops off, maybe, but I feel like everything is on him now. Uh, Varus just picked up his Edge of Night as well, so now LeBlanc isn't actually able to jump in and chain him either, so that's a very, very good pickup for him. Aeol actually manages to nearly kill Cryon and makes him reset, although he does have TP, so it doesn't matter. Since they have seen Aeol in bot, though, they're going to just try and rush this Baron. If they do leave, the Ash has spotted him now, so if they do leave, it's completely fine. Um, but they might even look to just burst it down. Like, I don't think this is good. This is a 50-50, and, you know, Tarzan's pretty talented. I'm not sure this is good. The, they get a pick on way, he's dead. Now they've just given away Baron. So this is actually uh, really bad for them, because now they've just given away this Baron buff. The cannon is going to 
try and burst Tarzan down, but he's just going to smite it away. No smite versus smite. They're always going to get it with the smite. So this was actually such a huge throw. The Baron start was great, but they really underestimated the power of Ash E. So as soon as that Ash E spotted them, all they needed to do was back out or potentially turn the fight before um, Ale managed to get there. But they didn't do either, and now they're just going to push the base down with Baron. They're dead for 30 seconds. I think they could actually just end here. Like, they, they're just going to go to end. So... This was a terrible call. RNG were were really in the in the driver's seat this game, and they had no real reason to force something like that. But unfortunately, they do, and they actually lose the game off it. So even though LNG did win this, I think RNG still played better. But whoever made that call for Baron just completely into it. So um, overall, I think. Um, RNG played extremely well, especially bot lane. I do think they missed so many opportunities, especially when it comes to um, the slow push that the virus was actually attaining. Uh, they just really disrespected um, the ability to dive on a mobile ADC bot lane. So that was game one. Um, we'll go fill out the spreadsheet now, and then we'll go on to game two. We'll leave it there for the YouTube video, though.